You know, finally tonight, the headline that we were so proud to see this week. Go ahead and take a look. Steven Henderson on the front page of the Detroit Free Press as the 2014 Pulitzer Prize winner for commentary. The prize committee said his columns were, quote, written with a passion and a stirring sense of place, sparing no one in their critique. We couldn't be more happy that Stephen has been recognized for what we've known for years. He's a vital voice for Detroit and our entire state and an outstanding journalist. So you have to tell us exactly what you were thinking in that picture right there. In that picture? Yeah. Uh, I still was trying to <laughs> process the whole thing. Like, <laughs> like how did this happen? Uh, I, you know, I think everyone aspires to, to think well, maybe one day I could win a Pulitzer Prize and you just to never think it will it will happen. It, it's sort of like a lightning strike. It's not just doing good work. It's, you know, getting lucky in some ways and, and having the right sort of perfect storm of, you know, topic and uh, and circumstances. and. Well, that's why we love you, too, because you're so darn humble. I'm um, just saying that you're a little bit lucky. But there is um, a collection of 10 of your columns, and we have them online at myweek.org that people can go back and read. What of them do you think stood out to you or when you were writing them or constructing them? I mean, this has obviously been a pivotal year for the city of Detroit, and your voice has been an important one, but what stood out in your mind of the, of the 10 that you wrote saying, you know what, I think I got across exactly what I needed to be saying at this point? Well, you know, I've, I've said this since I came back to Detroit in 2007. I mean, I came back to Detroit because, uh, uh, you know, I'm a native and uh, a very uh, strong advocate for, for Detroit and, and Michigan in a way that I couldn't be somewhere else. And so my work here means more to me than it could anywhere else. And I think by extension, then it can mean more to readers. I mean, I think the connection that I'm able to build with people here, I, I think over and over about the stuff that I've written about streetlights, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which I've sort of banged on for a couple of years, that's a very uh, common, you know, that's something that everybody in the city of Detroit can relate to. Is that was what was special about this body of work here. It was written by a guy with passion and compassion for the city, but also a guy who lives every day its issues. Uh, you know, you yeah. wrote about his experiences with these things, not as an outsider writing about, oh, those poor people are suffering this. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I said when I left Washington, that was why I was coming here. I was going home uh, to do work that I thought would be meaningful. And this is, uh, this is a great way to to celebrate that. Yeah, it is a celebration. I think it's also an important thing to point out that commentary is still <coughs> so very important. And I think it, it touches, it feeds doesn't me it, no guys? One. There you it's go. But, <laughs> but, 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 but what I'm saying is it, it still has a very large place, uh, newspaper commentary does, wherever you live in the state, um, about what's happening, I think, in your hometown, wouldn't you say? I think it has a bigger role than it, it, than it ever has. And unfortunately, too many newspapers are, are diminishing that role as we or make their cutbacks. It, yeah. You have um, newspapers now in the country without editorial pages. Mm -hmm. And I think it helps bring perspectives. It, it certainly gives the paper a voice and a stake in the community. But I believe it's also what readers are looking for today. They're getting bits and pieces of news from so many places. They're looking for perspective. Yeah. And, you know, they're looking for a perspective they agree with, that they don't agree with. They want to be challenged. They want to be affirmed. And I think that's the role of newspaper commentary. And I would say, I would say two things. One, here... Uh, having Nolan uh, upstairs from me at a different newspaper coming from a different perspective is an enormous part of what makes me able to do my job, I think, at the, at the level I am. I, I, there is not another city this size right. in America that still maintains that. I say that readers here are far better served by that, but also just the work that everybody in this town did, every journalist in this town did over the last year on this bankruptcy has been phenomenal. I think feel like we are in the golden age of Detroit journalism right now. Now I'm not say, just saying that about the free press, also the Detroit News, uh, DPTV, WDT, all kinds of partners have just really stepped up. And I'm being singled out, but I, I really feel like I am one small sliver of a much larger picture of excellence. Well, congratulations. Mm. It couldn't happen to a greater guy. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Applause to you. And that is going to do it for my week. Thanks so much for joining us. Check out myweek.org for Stevens Pulitzer Prize winning columns from the last year so you can read them all again. We are also on Facebook. Friend us. Follow us on Twitter. We are always talking during the week, not just on Thursdays. I'm Christy McDonald. Have a great Easter weekend and we will see you next week from my week. Take care.
Recently, Michigan's economy has begun to turn around. Michigan's gained over 250,000 new jobs. We've paid off $20 billion in long-term debt. And our population is increasing for the first time in a decade. But to make Michigan a top 10 state, there's still plenty of work to be done. Step up and help put Michigan on top. Learn what you can do at michiganturnaroundplan.com. Funding is also provided by Delta.